they would face at least two winters here, the howling swirl of dust wrapping them in an ever tighter cocoon. It hadn't been like this at first. No windstorms or unexplained power outages. No sense that the planet itself had begun to speak. Silver drank the last of the water from her canteen and traced her fingers over the well-worn engraving. Mais tu ne peux pas couler les étoiles. She had come here voluntarily, with enthusiasm even. But in the last few souls, the solitude and silence she had enjoyed after her arrival had begun to slip away, seemingly lost to the wind. They had been on Mars for less than six months, and Silver was tired. If she was to survive the next two hundred or so souls, she would have to learn to bear the whispering, the incessant, anguished, quiet roar of this place. Silver slid the canteen back into the large front pocket of her navy overalls and savored the cool, comforting weight of it against her thigh. She picked up the gray utility belt on the bench beside her and strapped it on, then swiveled it around until it sat firmly on her hips. Checking that she hadn't left anything behind, Silver walked out of the cafeteria and back to the hangar to find the chief. At six feet tall and with a mass of tight brown curls, Aaliyah Diambu cut a striking figure. It wasn't simply her stature that made people pay attention to her, though. Aaliyah was the chief flight engineer on Octavia, and chief engineer for Project Ark as a whole. When Silver entered the hangar and spotted a pair of long, navy-clad legs poking out from underneath Rover 4, she knew the chief was exactly where Silver had left her half an hour before, working away on the hulking gray machine. They had been trying to get the rover back in service for almost seven souls. And while Silver had enjoyed the chance to work more closely with the chief, she was itching to get on with the more creative, less rudimentary parts of the mission. Chief, Silver said and tapped her boot lightly against the creeper under Aaliyah's legs, are we ready to fire her up? Aaliyah pushed herself out from under the rover and blinked as her lenses took a second to adjust to the hangar lights. The green of her irises flickered to yellow and narrowed to a cat's eye slit. She smiled up at Silver, who propped her foot against the creeper to stop it sliding, then extended her hand to haul the chief to her feet. As long as she powers up, she should be ready to go, Aaliyah said as she clambered up the side of the rover. Can you release the clamps, Antara? Silver walked over to the control panel by the hangar door and flicked four switches to release the rover from the hangar's grip. She heard Aaliyah manually powering up the rover, so she began climbing into one of the two white extravehicular mobility suits hanging by the airlock. Once she was zipped up, Silver pulled out two tethers from beneath the panel, slung them over her shoulder, and waited for Aaliyah. Aaliyah connected one of the tethers to a hook at the back of Silver's EMS and then climbed into the other suit. Silver buckled her in and then attached both tethers to the fixture on the hangar wall. It wasn't really necessary to be tethered unless there was a major windstorm outside, but it was protocol, and protocol saved lives. The chief nodded at Silver, who nodded back, and they both pulled on their helmets and gloves and clicked them into place. Silver pushed the blue intercom button on the front panel of her suit and Aaliyah did the same. After they checked communications between themselves and the rover, Aaliyah flicked a series of switches on the control panel and said, Commencing launch sequence. Silver monitored the panel for any signs of problems with the rover. It had been out of commission for the better part of ten souls and this was the fourth time it had malfunctioned in the time they had been on the planet. All systems look good, Silver said and then laughed as Aaliyah tapped her gloved hand against the cold, gray metal of the control panel. She wasn't normally prone to overt displays of superstition, but Silver tried to cross her fingers and Aaliyah smiled. Despite the impressive mobility of the skin-tight, pressurized environmental suits they wore most of the time they were outside of the station, the gas-pressurized EMS were still cumbersome and inflexible. Ten. Nine. Eight. Aaliyah counted down to launch as the hangar doors opened and they braced themselves for the onslaught of dust. Zero. Five. 